and welcome, folks, to episode 44 of the Ministry of Dice podcast. We're a UK-based podcast talking about all things Dice Masters in the United Kingdom. I'm Chris, a.k.a. True Mr. Six, and with me today I have Andy. A.k.a. the Tommy Cannon to your Bobby Ball. <laughs> Cannon and Ball that were the celebrities that were at the panto I saw last Christmas. Oh, rock on, Tommy. Rock on, Tommy. Yeah, they were awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All, all the classic jokes. Um, I bet. They were very good. Bobby Davro, Lars. Bobby Davro, he's good as well. Uh, yeah, I'll take that. You're sounding croaky, my man. I know. A bit of a voice. Yeah. Using my voice, I think. Oh, dear. Yeah. That's two years we've seen uh, Cannon and Ball, actually. Is it? Yeah. Which yeah, one did you like tag me as? Bobby Ball. Bobby Ball? He's I'm the short one, isn't he? Rock on, Tommy. No, Tommy. Tommy's the short one. Is he? No, no. Tommy Cannon's the tall one. Bobby Ball was the one with the braces and the tash and the funny hair. <laughs> Just like you. <laughs> Just like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, good evening, my man, or evening as we're recording. How are you other than the croaky boys? Um, not too bad, mate. Not too bad. You? Yeah, you know, cracking on. I've had a couple of days off. It's the Easter school break. Um, so I've been off with the kids last couple of days, although we're we're having a shift swap on childcare duties, and I'm back in tomorrow. And I that must be a relief. Um, yeah, no. It's one, of, <laughs> it's one of them where you get into the swing of it, like this this being off malarkey and looking after the kids. I've been like proper domestic dad. And just as I've kind of found my rhythm, I'm back in work. But it's all, it's all a bit spotty because my pair have got two weeks off. So I've had a couple of days with them now. Then my wife's taken a couple of days. Then my mum and dad have taken a couple of days. Then I've got them again for a couple of days. So my time off is broken into two chunks. It's a bit annoying, really. Yeah. But, you know, them yeah. the breaks. Hey. Them is the breaks indeed. Dice Masters, the deadliest of all the games. <laughs> have you got a dad joke? Uh, I haven't got a dad joke lined up today. Uh, nothing I don't think I haven't already made. I've already yeah. thrown a few bad jokes around. Have you got a dad joke? I'm, I, I've, let me think. Yeah. So, it was my friend's funeral the other day. Oh. He, uh, yeah, he got he got hit uh, in the head with a ball when he was watching the tennis. Right. It was a lovely service. Hey! But I'm bumped. I think it needs more of a Tommy Cooper voice to pull it off. Here all week, folks. Here all week. Tip the waitresses. <laughs> Try to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well very good there we are another classic ministry of dice podcast kickoff i suppose we better talk about some games and stuff so what have you been up to in this last two weeks since we last got together my man what have i been up to i have uh, board gaming wise we got in a game of mansions of madness oh um, yeah and i spoke to you about told you about it it was based in a on a airship blimp type thing yeah yeah and it was very cool. It was like uh, Cthulhu meets Cluedo. Uh, so the beginning was quite slow. It was like you were sleuthing, asking questions, trying to work out who a murderer was. Uh, and then, it, as it does with the uh, kind of alchemy type things, it all kicked off at the end and you're scrabbling around fighting for your life. It was very cool. Very enjoyable game, that. What else have been up to? Playing lots of Apex Legends. Oh, for sure. Uh, yeah. What level are you on now? Uh, 69. Oof. <laughs> so i've stopped playing now that's me done yeah that's um, it. i'm 65 now oh crikey you're catching up i've closed the gap but i've not i've not been on the last couple of days so i'm getting a little bit of withdrawal symptoms uh spent a cup a good bit of time a couple of days ago trying to uh, improve the audio on um on the podcast which has gone down incredibly well <laughs> Yes, that's why we're recording two hours later than normal. Yeah, well, take... I've I've got our previous attempts to connect recorded on the hard drive. Oh, no. Yeah, oh, so great. let's see what happens in the outtake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> you have to do some beeping there, I think. And then Dice Masters-wise, we've been playing a few games. Mm. We put our Justice League game that we tried out last week up on the YouTube, or the first one of the ones we played in that evening. I fared quite well. I've had a little bit of a tinker. We'll put another one on this week uh, to show what we've been up to. Uh, overall, well, to explain, I did Justice League and you did Villains. Yes. 
and we very much themed it towards how we like to play. So you pinged me with a load of direct damage, and I was trying to smash you in the face with lots of attacking. That's right. Um, which is quite funny uh, that we managed to just kind of continue with how we do things. I've been a bit naughty, uh, though. I've added a non-justice card. Oh, what, from a different set? Yeah. Is that allowed? I thought the whole point was we were highlighting the new cards. We need it. Do we? We need it. It'll help us both. <laughs> oh, OK. Was it? PXG. Villa's Pat. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know that. Um, <laughs> so I had a bit of a tinker. That was fun. Uh, they're really good. They're also Justice League versus villains. They're quite brutal against each other. Uh, I'm not sure how it will play if you just kind of threw it into a mix of Dungeons and Dragons and Marvel and, and Warhammer, but just playing those affiliations out of the box, it's um, it's quite nasty. It, it's, it's a surprise to have a load of cards that are actually useful. Yeah, um, they're, they're good. Man. <laughs> yeah. They're good. Power Almighty, which I will speak about later. Spoiler alert, Corker. It's really, really good. I really like that as a, uh, a ramp mechanic. Um, have we done anything else? That's about it, really, for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Eventually. I sound, I sound like I've smoked like 40 cigarettes. You do. Anyway... Anyway, over, over to you. Over to me. <laughs> well, uh, on the non Dice yeah. Masters front, so with it being the Easter break, I've been uh, cracking the board games out with the kids. So we've had a game of Beastie Bar, we've had a game of Takinoko, we've had a game of Batman Dice, we've had a game of Bugs in the Kitchen. I don't know if you've seen that one. No, I've not. What's That's that? Those, uh, have you seen those little hex bug things with the little, the, like you flick a switch and they sort of they move around. Yeah, yeah, I've seen them. Yeah, yeah. So it's a game with hex bugs in it, basically. And you have these little, you have these little doors. It's in the kitchen. So what doors are knives, forks, spoons, or um, knives, forks, and spoons? Yeah, that's that's usually what you get. I feel like there's a fourth one, but maybe that's it. Yeah, anyway, you you roll the dice. The dice will say forks. You're allowed to open a fork door. Uh, you have a little trap that's yours in the corner of the board, and you're competing to open and close doors to guide the bug into your trap. Ah, um, so good. You, yeah, it's good, actually. You set it off in the middle. The bug's a bit random. They move a bit random. You're rolling the dice, so you, you might be like, oh, I'm opening that knife door. gives you like a channel right the way down to your base. So there's something a bit frantic about it, because then the next player sort of grabs the dice and makes their roll quick, you know, <laughs> <laughs> to see if they can get a knife to shut the door you've just opened kind of thing to stop you from winning and all that kind of stuff. So it's got a good energy to it, yeah. So a bit of that. And I feel like we played something else this week, but... It's escaping me now what it was. Oh, Kung Fu Zoo. The old, the old Kung time. Kung Fu Zoo. Yeah. I need to get a copy of that. Yeah, it's good, man. It's good fun. It's good fun. I've heard rumours that there's an expansion coming out that's going to add another couple of animals because each, each of your dice is a, is themed around an animal and each animal has a special power that you can use once in a game. So presumably there's going to be some new animals with some different special powers. So there's like uh, There's one that you can cover your opponent's eyes before they take their flick and stuff, you know. <laughs> Am I right that that's a WizKids game as well? Uh, yeah, I want to say yes. Cool. I want to say yes. Yeah. That was our, well, our Boxing Day game. You know, like I tend to get a game for me and the kids. Uh, not Boxing Day, Christmas Eve. I tend to get a game every year for Christmas Eve, like a... I don't know if, if you do this, there may be many listeners out there that do, but we all do like a, a Christmas Eve bag so everyone gets a new set of PJs. Yeah. And we'll get a game to play, maybe a Blu-ray of a Christmassy movie to watch. You know what I mean? Like a Christmas yeah. Eve pack, a fancy hot chocolate, a carrot and a sherry to put out for Santa, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, so Kung Fu Zoo was our kind of Christmas one, and it's been popular ever since. It's Yeah. Cool. And you've yeah. been very, very busy on the Dice Masters, right? Man, have I been busy on the Dice Masters front. So let's start with the local gaming store down at Element Games. Last Tuesday, we did a Justice launch party thing. So everybody played DC-only teams. Uh, everyone's pre-orders had arrived and stuff. So we just started making teams and getting into it and did DC-only for that. Uh, and then this week, we did Modern Single Affiliation, where I, I actually rolled over the same justice league team that i made for the dc only 
I used in the modern single affiliation as well because it really tickled me fancy when I used it a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Justice League, man, as a single affiliation team, have suddenly got legs on them. I can imagine. Like, the one that I've been playing is cool. And then to add in all the stuff from Justice League, the first kind of main set, as well as a spattering of the other ones, must be really good. Mm Because the Justice League themselves were pretty good with retaliation and different mechanics that they had and with oh, this lot yeah for sure man I can't wait to try them out with Golden yeah this was modern we played so it's not dissimilar actually to the team you played on the on our YouTube channel last week that we posted um, where I'm going for a board clear with the green arrow and then I've got Hawkman and Hawk Girl as my muscle if you like uh, yeah. and then the Hall of Justice that gives everything plus one plus one so the plan's pretty simple. It's it's actually an unusual team for me to play. Um, Duncan mentioned last night, he's like, that's quite aggro for you. Um, get your Hawkman out. Get a Batman out who gives all your Justice League characters plus one, plus one as well. Get get yeah. a couple of Hawk girls on the cheap. Once Aquaman's in the field, because you can buy her for one mask. She spins up when she attacks, so she gets, gets big pretty quick. Fire off a, a Hall of Justice. Fire off a Green Arrow. Clear the field go through for massive damage right? Fish, fresh, fresh. yeah yeah i mean it's got no there's nothing it's got no shenanigans no go-tos it really is just that simple bodies in the field clear your opponent's board down walk across um but that's two weeks in a row now i've gone in two three round events i've gone two and one with the justice league nice that's yeah. some proud of you going that great yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the the only in the single affiliation last night, the only team that gave it the beat it was the X Men team. Although I must admit, an Avengers team gave it a run for its money. It was very close to the Avengers. Um, but that's what you want, isn't it? You know. Yeah. It's like proper rock paper and stuff in. going on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then in the online world, I finished up on the two team takedown from CR Game Rooms tournament that's been running. I've gone three losses all the way through, man. What's going on there? I know, dismal performance. Uh, very disappointed. Uh, I put a blog post out just today. In fact, it's Wednesday as we're recording this. Doing a little write-up of kind of where I'm going wrong and what's happened there with the teams. Um, but uh, the long and the short of it is, didn't practice enough for my teams. Proper rusty with my collector team. Was all over the place with the way I played that. Um, and that Boom Boom team. I keep changing it. I keep changing it all the time. Rather than settling in and finding a groove with it. Right. So a bit all over the place on that. And I can't get my head around the meta at the minute either. I think that's part of the problem. Well, it's all just been changed up, isn't it? And Justice has got so much good stuff in it. Yeah, although it wasn't really the Justice stuff so much that tripped me up as it was, I suppose, the Avengers Infinity stuff. But um, that's cool. That's fine. The Boom Boom team, it was always close. It always stood a good chance. That just needs working on, practising tightening up around the edges collector team I've just got to go back to basics man all over the place with it weird buying orders not sticking to the plan going into that sort of def- that defensive control mode where I'm controlling stuff but I'm not actually getting anything done you know what I mean yeah um, so what did you find in the oh should we, should we talk about it later or the, the Avengers Infinity stuff what was in there because I thought that set was a little bit bland if I'm honest yeah, so uh, it's more about stuff in there that I could have made better use of. So, for example, my collector team was basically the collector team I played last June at UK Nats. Yeah. So I haven't, I haven't moved it forward at all, while other things have moved forward. So, uh, like the speed of getting the collector out, a Cree Captain Global wouldn't have gone amiss on the team for me. Right, I'm with you. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. But I didn't really, I really didn't really kind of make those changes and then what I had was I made one change I put the Scarecrow in from the new Justice set really just because I wanted to try something new out and I kind of I think that Scarecrow card had a little something about it but then started buying it first turn because I was like oh I want to get a Scarecrow on that Shriek and while it did a job for me I think in like with my game against Ben I Scarecrowed his Gold Dragon and that really shut down the Gold Dragon thing is with Ben he's got like 15 different win cons on his team so it didn't matter in the long run but against Steve, I dropped it on his shriek and it kept shriek out my face for a, a period of time, you know. So he, he does a job, but do you know? Do you get what I'm saying? I kind of like just made one small sh- change that wasn't really f- focused and contributed to the wider thing. 
And what I swap took out for it was the Batarang. Right. And Hopefully the you've got quite a few different things you can do with that. Yeah, and the Batarang, if it doesn't roll its bolts to go into my magic missile or to buy a danger room with or to collect her in my four-cost shriek. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. just kind of, yeah. Um, so I didn't move it forward. It either needs a fresh looking at the card pool as it stands now and updating, and I think I need to move away from the magic missile strategy with the tringers and the and stuff. Maybe I don't know. Anyway, I'm not sure. I just, but I think the main thing was didn't didn't stick to the plan. Let myself go really rusty. Just took the took the team off the shelf without kind of getting doing a bit of practice first, and then was doing stupid things like uh, I'll buy scarecrow round one. It's like what are you buy scarecrow for round one? You buy twinger, and I wasn't buying me twinger dice to get me swarm and you know just stupid things like that. Yeah. And then I was buying blobs and scarecrows and collecting in uh, bishop, you know, buying bishops and stuff. And I was yeah. like, well, that's great control, but I haven't bought a danger room, I haven't bought a collector, I haven't bought a nobby. What? <laughs> Do you know what uh, I mean? Well, yeah. We're just, it's been a few, just hanging out. a few months till you uh, you last played that that team. Yeah, yeah, it has been some months. I played. Yeah. I thought in my head I was playing it safe. Like, let's go for a team that you know well. But you know, even though it was somewhat like riding a bike, you should take a few laps around the block before you do the <laughs> <laughs> do the ten mile trek. You know what I mean? So yeah, boom boom team. That's strong. I think just with some practice, um, a little bit of tightening up around the edges, that that can go the distance. That's that's got something about it, I think. But collector team, got to take it back to basics and maybe start again. Oh, that sounds like fun. Mm. Yeah, for sure. There's certainly some stuff we can put into the YouTube channel, isn't it, and play around with. But we focus is on the one big weekend event coming up on the 27th of April now. One big weekend. Mm, yeah. that should be good you take that title no I don't think so take that title for the Ministry of Dice but it's LC, LCG format so again it's just like a, a fresh meta to try and get my head round and try and think about what what are my risks going to be what am I uh, what are the good win cons to focus on what other types of win cons might people be playing you know all that kind of stuff and um, pretty much mod modern with shriek though isn't it yeah pretty much pretty much yeah uh, and wonder woman yeah it's definitely twisting my melon a bit though definitely twisting my melon so yeah there you go that's that's and then of course the games with yourself which you've already talked about um <laughs> yeah so yeah there we are that's my dice masters journey we've got a couple of announcements to make yeah we'll, we'll do a community focus shall we we'll do the the beeps and a proper news bit in a set uh, before then unless you you weren't on Facebook and you haven't seen our uh, spoilers from last week. I'm not I, real. I forgot about this. Yeah. yeah April so, Fools. <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah, if um, if you don't, if you're not on Facebook and you just listen to it, and two weeks later you're still thinking that you're looking forward to uh, uh, a venerable dreadnought and the uh, in prison coming out. Sorry, that's not actually happening. Yeah, yeah. There was a few people I think that we managed to uh, that we we got on the end of the rod. Although there were a number of people who were, yeah, number of people I think were onto us very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Fun and Japes had a bio with that one. I always wanted to mention that was it last, that was the last episode. It was the episode before when we did the uh, global reverse collation, and um, one thing that we didn't pick up on on the episode was that cunning and clever Mister Bloor did work out what the phrase was and he actually said uh, Andy England used to be the greatest Dice Masters player obviously when he says it backwards and he's doing an impression of Arnold Schwarzenegger who didn't quite get picked up by us but uh, <laughs> if we pop it in about now you'll be able to hear what he actually said Andy England used to be the greatest Dice Masters player and there we go there's our two the two announcements i want to do to get off my chest right okay then this uh whatever it is on my chest is making me sound like um yeah like phil mitchell like phil mitchell like doc cotton yeah, that's probably <laughs> more like it, yeah. <laughs> oh nick right then let's tell the listeners what we got coming up then so we're going to roll into a community focus there's a couple of announcements that we want to share with the folks out there 
then we'll bounce into a little review on the mod modern stuff that we've been experimenting with let you know kind of how those how that's been panning out what our thoughts are then we've got uh, the promised pick of the week that you would have had last episode had we not filled it up with so much other stuff like april fools um <laughs> So that pick of the week for you, where we're going to take a card out of Justice and the accompanying team packs and talk about why we think they're awesome. And then, towards the back end of the episode, we got a special little treat for you folks. Mm. Another treat. Can it be? Another treat. Can it be? Is it another spoiler? Is it a real spoiler? Oh, do you reckon? Could be. Could be, you know. We do speak to Jimmy and Justin and all those folks over at WizKids on a daily basis now. You know what I mean? Yeah, practically part of the furniture. Yeah. Maybe we felt so guilty about April Fool's in you all that we've been sitting on a little gem. I have to wait to the end of the episode to find out. Absolutely, yeah. So should we get on with the community focus then, my man? I've just... That sounded a bit too professional for us, didn't it? Yeah, it did, actually. Uh, Uh, What are we going to do now? Community focus? Yeah, let's go do the community focus then. (laughs) Beautiful. (laughs) <laughs> this is london calling here is the new yes ladies and gents it's community focus time and just a couple of little bits to put out there into the wider world of the interwebs the first announcements for uk listeners only and then just a little point you over to uh, another juicy little tidbit that the dm north guys and their weird internet sleuthing bot thing is uncovered so uh, yeah let's start with the mod pdm shall we oh yes it's oh yes. For another one absolutely yeah we are pleased to announce uk players that the next ministry of dice presents dice masters event will be taking place on the 18th of may is that the right one Yes, that is the right one. It's Saturday, Saturday the 18th of Saturday May. Saturday the 18th of May. We're only saying that because I, uh, the store that we've arranged it with, I kept saying Sunday 18th of May, which caused some confusion because I had my day and my date modelled up. Anyway, uh, Saturday the 18th of May. It's taking place at the Crescent Gaming Consortium in Leamington Spa. Uh, these guys hosted our MOD PDM roughly around the same time last year, actually. Uh, yeah. And they were so warm and welcoming and caring and, and lovely and cuddly that... Uh, uh, we thought, well, well where, where could we possibly go? We'll head on back to those guys over there. Um, it's the usual Ministry of Dice Presents type of affair. So it's going to be Swiss rounds all day. No top cuts. I paused yeah. there. I thought you might jump in because that's the bit you're particularly passionate about. <laughs> It is indeed. That's that. Sorry, I was just doing a little bit of research on my phone for the next segment that we just said that we're going to do. Um, <laughs> okay, I was listening. Promise. Yeah. So yes, all games, all day, no top cuts. If you come and you want a day of gaming, you want a day out, then you will get one, and there will be no buggering off at lunchtime uh, in your car back for an early bath. We will be playing all day. At the end, you get loads of prizes. Uh, Because Mr. Williams here will have his bag out with all his... No, it's not your bag, is it? It's your box. box. Yeah, Yeah, I'm looking at it, actually. I was doing some stuff with it today, sorting out some bits and bobs that I've acquired. (laughs) Some new additions. Yeah, that's right. The True Mr. Six Mystery Prize raffle will be in effect. This means that uh, in addition to having incredible prizing for first place, second place, the Fellowship, and of course the much coveted last place Ministry of Ice wooden spoon there will also be the raffle taking place so every game won on the day will earn you a raffle ticket and each of those raffle tickets has a sexy exciting corresponding prize out of my raffle box which uh, I think that deserves an ooh let's give it an ooh ooh I hope, thank you i hope you all did that in your cars and on your trains and buses while you're committing to work along with me uh yeah the, the i mean the box i think sometimes it's got better prizes in it than the <laughs> than what we put up for the top spot um but we have hard to find promos uh, certainly if you're a new player there's stuff in there that you you'll you'll struggle to get your hands on on these shores available in the raffle box we've got play mats we've got dice bags we've got five round dice we've got stuart provided incredible custom art cards the like of which you've never seen before 
exclusively drawn for the Ministry of Dice event. Uh, what else have we got in there? We've got all sorts of stuff. We've got some superhero Avengers fun toys. There's Lego sets in there. You know, Lego sets. Graphic novels. Graphic novels, colouring books, all related to the IPs. DVDs, Blu-rays, the raffle is... So even if you come along and you have a pretty rough day of it and you lose round after round after round, all you got to do is pull a couple of game wins out. It's best of three each round, so all you've got to do is pull one game win out and you'll be walking away with a little bit of swag in your back pocket. For first place, second place and fellowship, we've got a set of the Super Spies promos, which are very prestigious and hard to find over here. And I've slipped a fourth set into the raffle. Have you? I have. That's my whole stash gone now, though. I'm putting all my... Except for the set I've got myself. That's, that's That's my whole stash going in the box. All eggs in one basket. Yeah, all in, all in, all in. So super spies for first place, second place, and fellowship, and there's one in the raffle. So just pulling a couple of game wins could get you those those raffle tickets, and at the end of the day, you could be walking away with the much-coveted, hard-to-find, super-prestigious super spies promo sets, as well as maybe a Hulk out drawn by the Incredible Stew. It's not the Hulk out, is it? The one that he's done? No, he's done a new one. Did he not send you the picture? No. He sent me the picture. Oh, nice. Yeah, they're looking good. The Batmobile is incredible. That, cool, isn't it? that might go it, missing before it. He did a Hellboy whole Hulk out as well, wasn't he? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah he's, cool. he's done a few sketch art and a few painted cards. The Batmobile looks awesome. Uh, the Hulk out is amazeballs. The Batgirl's incredible. Yeah, just really great alt art cards that he's done for us there. Very cool. Very cool. I mean, it's, it's the. The format of the event that we've laid out is uh, popular. Indeed, the one big weekend that Chris spoke about earlier on has adopted the MOD PDM style. So uh, it's, you know, we're, we're, we're meta changing, mate. We are meta changing. We're also enormously egotistical, so I had to remind everybody of that fact. Um, of course. Our, our event, though, the MOD PDM that's coming up is going to be modern constructed. We are anticipating, although nothing has been confirmed at this point, we are anticipating that the UK Nationals is just around the corner. In fact, there's the possibility that it's going to be at the UK Games Expo, which we, we'd only be a couple of weeks ahead of. So we've decided to do a straight up modern constructed event, and we've called this MOD PDM a Nats rehearsal. So yeah. if, if you are thinking about going along to Nats but aren't getting much of an opportunity to practice and play test and get a sense of what the meta looks and feels like, we thought it might be a good opportunity for people to kind of put their best teams together and get those muscles flexed and warmed up ready for the Nationals. Uh, even if it doesn't happen at the UK Games Expo, it'll only be a matter of a month or two after our event anyway, so we just figured that's probably the best this time around. Yeah, all well, fingers crossed they don't end up doing it on the uh, 18th of May because that'd be a bit crap. Well, I think if anything, it'll go back, it'll go further back rather than forward to fall more in line with the US conventions that events are taking place at. When's Origins? <sighs> don't know. No, I don't know. But I think that's a bit. That's quite a bit later. Yeah, it's like July time. I yeah, it's like mid late July. I don't, I don't know. I must admit, I don't pay attention because you know, obviously, the chances of me being able to afford to go are, are, are slim to none. So when there's a lot of origins talk, I don't, I don't really. I let it float past me a little bit, you know. So yeah, MODPM 18th of May. Do come. The event uh, tickets are up on Eventbrite. You can find the link on our Facebook page. Yes, that's right, um, yeah. Uh, pre-booking yeah. really helps us out, actually, folks. So if you are coming along uh, and you're able to confirm that you're coming along, please hop on and uh, purchase your ticket. Really, uh, the long and the short of it is, I like to be absolutely buttoned on sure I've got enough raffle prizes in my box. So uh, a show of commitment by buying your ticket lets me know what my numbers are looking like so I can make sure I've got enough stuff to cover the amount of raffle tickets that we're putting out. Yeah. Else we'll be running next door to buy a load of Harry Bows last minute. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And every, everybody loves a one pound bag of Harry Bows as their prize. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I said that jokingly, but kids and grown ups, they love it so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what i've heard anyway <laughs> yes indeed so there you go that's the um international listeners you can tune back in now uh well unless of course you want to fly over i don't think it's all that far from east midlands airport <laughs> <laughs> prestigious event as it is indeed uh, indeed yeah um and what's the other piece of news oh um the P- x-men P- forever P- hxg 
Yeah, the X Men Forever rule book has been published somewhere. Where's that been published? I don't know. Teach found it. Well, I think it, it was it was the guys at DM North who tracked it down. But I'm on their website now, and I can't see where they where they put it. I think Teach was first. Oh yeah, sure, of course he was. The figurehead of Scottish Dice Masters, of course. I think they might have faxed it over to him to check it over. Yeah, I think I think that's likely because there's okay, not cool. there's, there's not enough Scottish spellings in there <laughs> 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 and words like gauk. <laughs> Four dice, oot, your bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, but yeah, he's got um, the rule book. Uh, for I'm, you know, I don't read rule books. I haven't read a rule book since the Justice League set, but. I just let other people give me a heads up when things change. But what he did have was a few card pictures in there. There's a Professor X that's now been spoiled. He's got a pretty interesting game text. And his global is the HXG global. PHXG. Yeah, so it's like we've gone from PXG to HXG. And then you've got new PXG, which is the Psychic global. Now we've got new, new PXG. So there's been a lot of debate about what we're going to name this card. It's got to be PHXG. PHXG. Rolls off the tongue, that. Yeah, yeah. Set and ready to go on that one. Yeah. I'll have to put some thought into that. I don't think that's good enough. <laughs> yeah. No. Nah. Not working. <laughs> yeah. We'll get back to you. We'll work on that one. Yeah, we'll work on that, we promise. Uh, and then I'm scrolling through the DM North website to try and find the other spoiler, and I can't find it. So that that's gone well. In. Yeah, that's gone it's, well, but there's a basic action that got spoiled, and that has a psychic making global on it, a uh, psychic prepping global on it, but it's one generic, which I thought was kind of cool. Oh, that is quite cool. Yeah. So the, the Professor X uh, ability, which is, was it, is KO all your sidekicks and gain one. I know they go, yeah, they go into prep, so KO all your sidekicks and gain one life for each of that, that get KO'd. Could be interesting. Would be amazing with new PXG. Uh, or Instant War. Yeah, true. true. But there's that actually there's two cost like, oh, this, is, this is going to be amazing with my Mimic team. And then the realisation that it wouldn't because you can't have two. I'd have to have two different versions of PXG. Mm, yeah, that dog don't hunt, mate. That dog don't hunt. Proper spat me down my arm that. Yeah. Okay. I feel your pain. Uh, there was <laughs> also uh, a new keyword that was noticed well um so my understanding is that we've been aware of this keyword before but everyone forgot about it and now it's come back out the woodwork which is called corrupt and this is you you take dice from your bag depending on how much you spend um mm. place one in the used pile and then put the rest in your bag which seems okay which seems quite curious uh what we don't know is what triggers that whether it's like when fielded or while active or a global or you know we'll have to we'll have to see what happens with that one um but that's a interesting churn mechanic yeah it's yeah. Yeah. Not sure how that would pan out. I'd need to give that a go to try and work that out properly, I think. Yeah, I think there's I think there's potential in it, but um greater minds than us, I'm sure we'll get to the bottom of how useful that, that is or isn't. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And that's about it really. That's that's all that's been going on in the world of Dice Masters in the last two weeks. Usually the universe provides a little bit more, doesn't it? Yeah, well, so uh, the universe has been a bit disappointing this week in terms of providing I thought we might get a UK Nationals announcement. That didn't happen. I thought we got a random more. poll, though, didn't we? Oh yeah, yeah, that was appreciated. Yeah, that was great. Thanks. Yeah. Anyway, should we move on to the next segment? Yes, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's move on to the next segment. Cool. All right, folks, that's the end of the community focus. On to the next piece. Bye. Yes, welcome back, dear listeners. And for this next segment now, what we'd like to do is revisit this idea. I say revisit, provide our thoughts and reflections on the mod modern game testing that we've been doing. So, uh, Andy, if if, if 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 we've got a new listener who doesn't know what we're talking about here, would you like to share what mod modern is? Mod modern was our thought that uh, when uh, rotation came in, they were going to cut everything but uh, non-blind product. Uh, how wrong we were! True uh, that. Yeah, so it's basically it's, it's all non-blind product from Avengers forward. So all the new stuff since they've gone LCG, uh, and we built teams to see what we could do, how it fought against each other, and uh, that's about it. 
Yeah, yeah. So we just felt like we hadn't really been engaging with the new the new stuff well enough. And you were saying that you don't really get your head around it until you put it on the table. So we kind of just restricted ourselves, didn't we? And we played around with everything from Harley Quinn onwards. And then more recently, we've been playing around specifically with the Justice and the two accompanying team packs just to get a grip, really, and see where, where the new cards are at and uh, what, what it's like for ramp, what it's like for win conditions, what it's like for control. Um, is there fun stuff in there? Is it meta or is it is it something else? You know, let's see if we can answer those questions. And I'm quite yeah. confident and happy to say that things are looking pretty good in the sealed product. Yeah, there's some corkers. Yeah. Things are looking pretty good. I, I know there's a general opinion out there that the Avengers Infinity stuff was a little bit on the bland side. But that doesn't seem to have been our experience from sort of restricting ourselves down to just playing with that stuff. At least I don't believe it is from my point of view. Yeah, no, certainly out of the different sets to choose from, I've, I found it the hardest one to try and find useful cards, which is always a shame because... My favourite characters, what drew me into the game in the first place, was be able to play with cards with Iron Man on and Cap on and yeah. uh, the Avengers. Uh, and yet, I always seem to divert to different things that like away from him. And when I look at like the Iron, I was like, oh, the Iron Man card. Um, that'd be good. For, firstly, like the Iron Man and War Machine set, and lo and behold, there wasn't an Iron Man card in there. Uh, and um, and then <laughs> Avengers Infinity as well. Uh, they're all right, but they're not that great there's there's a, a far better options out there for cards notable exception for me would be the black widow with the force attack uh mostly because of the force attack i think uh yeah we've played i mean you say that but we've definitely played around with a few bits that were f- were from those sets actually now i'm trying to think what team have i been playing <laughs> yeah, I, I, I had the black widow and that's about it i think from there yeah, the 40k stuff definitely stands out. Yeah, the 40k stuff. I mean, you you played a game, a few games when you were for the um, with the Black Panther mm. from uh, Avengers Infinity. Yes. Which against my villains team was bloody horrible. Yeah, yeah. I've tr- I've tried it out more recently, kind of expanding the card pool to be non mod modern uh, with a danger room. It's not quite as smooth actually. No, especially no. that ex- extra moving part, don't you? Yeah, it's not quite as smooth, but it's definitely got potential. But uh, there's definitely, yeah, the Black Widow stands out. But there's, there's stuff in there. We've we've made a lot of use of Cree Captain Global. Yeah, I always forget that they're flats from the set because it's the uh, the team pack. But yeah, Cree Captain, Cree Soldier well, Ramp the, with Swarm. The, the Swarm is good as well. Yeah, um, you use that meteorite and that Songbird, that intimidating Songbird, quite a bit. Yeah, the meteorite's good. It, it's not great against you because you never attack. True. Um, but overall, and we I picked it out on the DM Armada video we did about the team pack. Do go and watch that. It's great. And possibly the best video he's had on his channel. I think actually it is his best video. To be fair. Yeah. Um, and it's when meteorite is active, your opponents cannot attack with more than two character dice. Uh, and if you had that against me. Um, I'd be spitting feathers, but uh, mm. Chris is more of a ping, pingy, ping uh so less likely. But songbirds, the the three costs. It's not two costs. Don't 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 look at um, sidekick app on that one. And it's basically it's, it's a three cost bolt with intimidate on character dice with a purchase cost of four or less, and it's just blinding. A lot of the control characters are um, are four or less. Uh, I mean, outside of what we were playing, things like Blob, Shriek immediately springs to mind. Yeah. But to be able to get rid of something horrible, not oh, yeah, it includes that Black Widow as well that you slipped into a team. The yes. New Black Widow boobs. Yeah. Agent. Agent boobs. Um, so that's really good as well. So yeah, you're right. I'm wrong. It does have quite a few good set, uh, cards in the overall campaign team pack bundle. Yes, yeah. Harley Quinn, we've used quite a few bits out of that. I've, I'm a big fan of a number of the Poison Ivies in there. Um, you played around with that Deadpool, didn't you? Uh, not Deadpool, Deadshot. Deadshot, yes. I mean, I, I did until Grey Hunter rocked up. That did yeah. very much the same thing, but at uh, 
well, for half the price at a two cost instead of a four cost. Uh, I mean, should we do rundowns of our teams that we've waffled on too much already? Or? We've probably waffled on a bit too much already. Uh, plus, uh, I can't find my team on my sidekick app. Oh, okay, cool. I don't well, know where then, I put it. <laughs> I'll, um, I'll keep on going. Uh, so with the, the Grey Hunter, I'll use that with... Uh, oh, come here. Where are you? Gazgul Thracker, uh, Prophet of Gork and Mork. Yeah. So when, he's, when he's active, when you can use a playable ability once per turn, you can KO a character dice you control and deal one damage to your target opponent. So you get him in the field. He's a six cost. And one thing that we did find out was that pre-Justice uh, ramp, I think, pre-Soldier Swarm was the only thing we found that was any good. It's, it's very light on ramp. I don't know if they meant to do that or if we've not found some nugget that uh, is good but um yeah we were definitely relying much more on things like throne brick from the harley quinn pack uh the fetid bloat drone global we used quite yeah. a lot as a ramp and churn option atlas global um but it was it was lean it was definitely lean yeah definitely um so that gasmal track was a six cost get him out and then when the gray hunter comes out you can automatically ko it do one damage to everything on the other side of the field uh, as well as one damage to your opponent uh, that's quite a nice move or again with the songbird with the intimidate fire her out not intimidate something off and then you want to get her out of the field to do it again so you can just knock her out with Gazgul Frecker to, to bring her around again. So a few different options with him in the field and the different things with Ben Fielded, etc. and when knocked out. That was quite fun. Yes. Fetid, fetid Bloat Drown to stay in the Warhammer theme. That global was awesome. As long as you can get a sidekick and a shield. Yes, which in the wider modern context you can you can do with ease. Although I, I was reflecting on that. That's two globals to do that that you're handing your opponent the use of also. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But it's it's good. It's um, I like things like that in investigation where you can draw and roll in your turn because it always can can put people off guard. Uh, I can remember Seth at the MOD PDM at uh, Leamington Spa last year actually, and he was spamming spot and investigation, and it, and it, it all. I mean, I, I, it might not for other people. It always kind of puts me a bit off guard because you think that's what they've got. I can deal with that. And then when you're buying, churning and rolling that same turn, yeah, uh, it like, also gives you the opportunity to react very quickly with what's been done, done the turn before. So you can buy uh, into, you know, the songbird, say if you've got out a uh, Black Widow yeah. and potentially have it get through. you got to roll it nine times out of ten. It doesn't. <laughs> um, uh, and and then you've, you've dealt with that. In, in your main step which is quite nice so that's a, a certainly a good one the game text in bad either which is uh, when an opposing sidekick or level 1 character dice is KO'd you may feel the sidekick die with, from your use pile uh, when um, I suppose it depends on what your opponent is doing uh, but there's any kind of shenanigans going on there where they're trying to knock out things to do similar you can fill your field up with sidekicks the grey hunter if they've got a lot of sidekicks and you KO the Grey Hunter and it knocks out all the sidekicks, suddenly you can then fill your field with sidekicks. And if you've got any kind of pumps or anything there, you could potentially kind of swing through for quite a lot of damage. So um, quite hard to pull off. I only did it once, I think, against you. But it's cool. It all kind of works together quite nicely. Yeah, yeah. And um, Instant War, of course, If you, while we're talking about sidekicks, we played around with that a little bit. I certainly did. I like the ability to force your opponent to put cheap characters that can then easily be cleared down. You know, when you're trying yeah. to do damage for each KO or whatever. Uh, I tried the Hawkeye out, the one that deals your opponent damage for his level. Uh, awesome card, but that five cost is too high for what he does. Yeah, definitely. If he was cheaper, you could be cycling him around and doing like two, three, one, two, three, you're doing loads of damage. Yeah. Deadly, uh, the other fetid blow drone, the deadly one, it can be really super useful. Really horrible. Yeah. Uh, force attack Black Widow, just to return to her for a minute, as a form of removal is really quite effective because there's lots of cards around that are annoying that have a low attack that you, yes. you know, that you wouldn't, you wouldn't mind going. Oh, I'll take the one to get that out of my face, you know. So that's really interesting. And let's not forget Venerable Dreadnought that we spoke about in length a couple of episodes back. Oh, that is can we super, just forget about super that strong, super strong. And um, 
and horrible. Yeah. Although Black Widow does do a pretty good job of shutting that down. The yeah, the new promo. Yes. Yeah, we did find that our games because what was happening was you were putting Venerable Dreadnought on as part of your win condition actually with your seething corruption strategy. Yeah. I was then putting it on as the best counter I could find at the time for your Venerable Dreadnought. And our games just then became about Venerable Dreadnought offs. <laughs> Who can catch the catch the edge in the Venerable Dreadnought face-off before they can then do their other stuff? Then Black Widow came along. I dropped that on my team. You were sticking with Venerable Dreadnought because it suited the uh, your win condition. Uh, and she, she definitely slowed you down. Yeah, definitely. I, mean, I, I think I didn't clock that Songbird would work against Black Widow. Yeah, that did happen once, didn't it? Because you, you, it was it's just globals using Moon Moonsu, not yeah. And I'm pretty sure I use some globals. Glo- I use some globals. That's Dutch for globals, folks. That's for you, Peter. That is just just for you, Mister Van der Velde. Uh, I've lost what I'm talking about now. Yeah, and it did some stuff, and it was really good. <laughs> <laughs> So there you go, folks. Andy did some stuff, and it was really good. So mod modern, yeah. I think we've we've had a lot of fun experimenting with the new stuff and just uh, enforcing this this rule of only using the new stuff. We're now into justice, so we'll give you an update on kind of how justice is going. Although what I will say is, I suppose we've uh, started playing around with the justice stuff at the point where we've kind of kicked our YouTube channel off as well to support what we're doing. So if you are interested to see that our first kind of justice related game went up, was it last week or the week before? It's last week, yeah. We're going to yeah. do another one tonight, aren't we? And yes. put that up as well. Yeah, absolutely. So you can, you can kind of see actually those, how those games are going for realsies, testing the Justice stuff out. And then I suppose at some point we should expand out Justice to then start moulding with all the other sealed products. Yeah, I'm quite excited about kind of Because Justice, for me, this, this Justice box, and I'm pointing at it now, is got a lot more stronger cards than the Avengers and and as well to some extent to the Warhammer box as well it'd be nice to see what we can meld together maybe use our mod modern teams and our justice teams and try and splurge them together and see what we can make yeah absolutely so watch this space for more, more on that guys but the seal product is getting a MOD thumbs up should we go on to another segment where yeah. I don't talk like dot com yeah, yeah, sure. Well, uh, while we're on the subject of justice, let's uh, let's wind this segment up and roll into our justice pick of the week. Welcome back, there, ladies and gents. And this next segment now is the pick of the week. Let's put the theme tune in. Yeah, let's do it. We've not we've not put the theme tune in for a while. I don't know if you've noticed that I've not been adding it. <laughs> I, I haven't actually. We haven't done a pick of the week for a while, though, have we? Yeah, I think if you go back and listen, I've not been added to it. <laughs> I'll do it now. Oh. Pick of the week. Yes, that's right. Pick of the week. And this is the pick of the week that we promised you last episode. But we didn't mystery get around to putting segment. in the Mystery 4 segment. Well, they had the Mystery 4 segment. Well, they did. I, th- I think that was possibly the most popular segment of last episode. <laughs> it was very sh- <laughs> oh no! I'm going to have to edit that now for goodness sake. <laughs> goodness sake um, yes pick of the week and we are taking a look at the new release Justice Doom Patrol and Mystics has arrived on our shores so we're going to focus on our, our picks from the campaign box and the two team packs pretty straightforward the regular listeners will know the routine by now but if you're a new listener then what we like to do is we like to pick a theme find a card that we love that fits that theme um and talk about why we think it's amazing put some combo ideas together yeah wherever it goes really i suppose yeah Yeah. so uh would you like to start my man or shall i oh after you sir Ah, uh, thank you very much. Okay, well, my pick of the week is the Yellow Lantern Ring, Green Lantern Killer from the Mystics team pack. It's a three-cost bolt, and its game text reads, when a character die blocks this turn, re-roll it. If it shows an energy face, KO it, and Yellow Lantern Ring deals one damage to its controller. Otherwise, it remains in the field zone on its rolled level, and then in brackets it says, it's still blocking. That's important, that bit. I like that bit. Uh, Then it's got a double burst on it, which says, instead, Yellow Lantern Ring deals its controller two damage for each character die that rolls an energy phase. 
Very nice. And you've been playing around with this one for quite a bit, haven't you? Yeah, well, so it caught my eye when the when it was spoiled way back, whenever that was. And yeah, I've been playing around with it. I, what I particularly like about it is this sort of damned if you do, damned if you don't choice that it gives your opponent. Mm. So in my head, I'm only going to attack with a character that I'm happy to attack with, if you know what I mean. And that sounds like a random statement. But do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't know how to better explain that. But with a yellow lantern ring fired off, it's like, well, if if you roll it and it and it gets KO'd, well, I'll deal you the one or two damage from the lantern ring, and my attacking character goes through. Or it comes back in and it's still blocking, and it's got to deal with the attacking character one way or another. Do you know what I mean? So I just really like that sort of tough choice kind of thing. And uh, as you know, well know, I've been mucking around with the well i like the re-roll element of it so i've been trying him out with the riddler although i'm struggling with the six cost on him mm. but that's only because we've been playing sealed only i reckon in a, in a proper modern team i can make that work better the re so the re-roll element so um i've been playing around with that so you block re-roll your dice you get the damage from uh, the riddler for the re-roll and then you also either get the damage or whatever happens from the blocking from the action uh, i've also been playing around with it with the fetid bloat drone the one that's deadly that forces everyone to block yes that's horrible yeah because it's uh, when a character die blocks so you could just say oh, i'll just let it through and i don't get the benefit of my yellow lantern ring so just kind of box you in with a force block uh, fetid bloat drone particularly because it makes everybody block although you could use things like um what's it uh, what's that D D one the basilisk was it the basilisk Ooh, can't remember i want to say the basilisk or uh, if you play madam web yeah madam web or if you're playing uh, golden you could look at the globals i think was it the goblin attack force from Yu-Gi-Oh? force blockers yeah, and the giant spider, I think, was a force block global as well. Yeah. It? Yeah. Um, so just just in that space, again, creating that sort of damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. And I've, so the Fetid Bloat Drone's got the deadly. If you block, it's going to get KO'd one way or another. But if it gets KO'd by Yellow Lantern Ring, all the better, because I'll get to ping you with a few extra little bits, you know. Oh, and um, one of my faves, I've been messing around with this card a lot lately, the Poison Ivy, that makes your opponent lose one life when a character gets KO'd. KO'd. Yeah, so it's just racking up the damage. Yeah, absolutely. So fetid bloat drone attacks. Everybody's got to block. If I can attack just with him, then they've all got to block him. He's deadly, so they're all going to die. So they'll either get KO'd by yellow lantern ring, and you take the damage from the yellow lantern ring, and from poison ivy, or at the very least, they'll all die from the deadly and take the loss of life from poison ivy. You know, it's nasty, nasty. I have been. Uh the victim of that a couple of times and it's it's horrible because you just want to keep your field clear so <laughs> yeah. um you're ending yeah, up that actually yeah that. It, i mean that's that's one of the defenses against it is that you don't want a load of characters in your the field so that so that they can't all block and be re-rolled and potentially have like three damage to you per dice uh but then if you've got Certainly, when you, we're playing kind of the mod modern, there's usually your combos like three or four characters, and I've always liked to play with lots of lots of characters kind of in and attacking, and you just can't do it because you get your your little combo of two or three lined up, and then th- th- you're either got to try and get them out of the field before the end of your turn, or they're just going to get Lincoln knocked out. Yeah, it's an infuriating team or a infuriating combo. Yeah, and if you and if you attack, the fetid bloat drones deadly still works. Yeah, and if I KO your character on your turn when you're attacking me, the poison ivy loss of life happens. So, but you know, you can it, that, that's just what I'm messing around with and how it's caught my eye. You can play around with I don't know fast. It could be a way to mess around with it. You know what I mean? Uh, re-roll it if it hits energy, it gets KO'd. Take the damage from the yellow lantern ring. If it doesn't, then you got to deal with this fast character that's going to kill you before you can kill it anyway kind of thing so you can mess around with stuff like that i've been looking at the new black adam when one of your legion of doom character dies dice ko's an opposing character the controller loses one life so i was thinking about dropping poison ivy and him down on the in the field um i haven't quite thought it through yet who the attacker is going to be but find a legion of doom attacker (laughs) that's going to survive the attack and then just you know rack it up 
Oh, I'll tell you something else I like to do as well. You've you've experienced this one, my man Andy, is uh, fire off an instant war, force you to put a load of sidekicks in the field. Yeah. And then kill them off. <laughs> 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 yeah, re-roll them. Let's see how likely you are to roll them on character face. <laughs> So yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I can ramble on. I could probably keep going, but that was that was my pick of the week, the Yellow Lantern Ring. Uh, there's lots of great choices, of course. Uh, I, I really found it hard to pin one down, but I thought, well, I've got to go with that one because that's the one that I immediately went to try and build a team around. So oh, very cool. So clearly, it's my pick, isn't it? You know. Yeah. So there we are. Over to you then, bro. Okay. So well, I got the. Justice campaign box and the team packs through yesterday. It was my birthday yesterday, as you recorded. Uh, so I've had a flick through Sidekick app, but I've said it before. Until I get the cards out onto the uh, the play mat and start playing, um, I'm, I don't seem to have that same analytical mind that Chris does, and uh, kind of immediately spot a combo. Uh, I'll put together an idea and then kind of practice with it, change things in and out. Yeah, I don't seem to be able to kind of vision it as quickly. Uh, but this one card that I'm keen to play around with, uh, which is some people might have seen my Discord post a while ago when I was trying to find a ramp option or a good ramp option for Mod Modern, so from the new sealed stuff. Uh, and I've gone for Power Almighty, the basic action card. That's a really good basic action. It is, isn't it? So it's a four cost. Uh, and the text reads, spin each of your active character dice up one level. For each active character die you could not spin up, prep one die from your bag. Mm. So I'm thinking, again, there's not a lot of ramp mechanics in the, the, the sealed sets or certainly the newer stuff. But obviously sidekicks count as characters. They only have one, uh, one level, so you can't spin them up. Yep. So immediately every sidekick you've got in the field you're going to prep a die in a more open kind of card pool. Professor X immediately comes to mind. Yeah, the new Atlantis so you... Global. What does that do? Uh, it's like the old Star Labs one. You pay a shield oh. and a fist, and you put a sidekick in the field, and you prep one. Yeah, so the, so yeah, so you're getting the, the sidekicks out. So, so maybe you buy Power Almighty turn one or two. Uh, you start getting sidekicks out by the roll in them or using a mechanic to get them more in the field. And when Power Almighty comes out, uh, you can potentially kind of prep two, three, four dice, depending on how lucky you got with your sidekick rolls or how well you've manipulated different globals. Mm. And the more sidekicks you got in the field, the quicker Power Almighty is going to churn through again, certainly when it's prepping dice as well. Potentially you could, if you're doing it right, and I've got to play around with this, and I'll let you guys know in our kind of updates how it's getting on you could potentially have power almighty coming round and round each turn and you're just going to be prepping loads of dice you could potentially have it as as good as mimic but it's untested yet so it might be a load of pants well it's interesting you should say that because um we played a justice release event down at the flgs down at element games uh this week which I'll probably, we've not recorded it yet, but I'll probably talk about in the intro that we're recording when we get together to record next week. <laughs> um, but I used that action and I had it paired up with, what was I using? Oh, there's a, there's a Zatanna that spins everything up one level when it's fielded. Not the one with the yeah. global, but one you just sort of drop in the field. And it's, it's Mystics that it spins up, isn't it? Is it just Mystics? I think it might be. Uh, that's... You sure? Hang on, I've got the time. Um, not 100. No, it's not mistakes. While the Tanner is active, when you feel the character die, spin it up one level. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's cool. She is a mystic. Is the Tanner being a magic? I've got the team. I played here. Uh, it was a nice little team, actually. Justice League's got it going on, man. Single affiliation. It's going to go the distance. This bad boy. Um, but you can drop her in the field. She'll spin everything up. I was using the Hawk Girl from Batman set. Justice League character who spins up when she attacks. So I had all my characters maxed out at level three all the time you can just prep for days then yeah i think it, it could ha find its place uh quite happily into an x-men team that's using something like um xavier's school that spins all your dice up or yeah. uh there's uh what's his name thunderbird there's a character that does the same as that as a tanner although he's a bit more expensive that spins i think it may, may, may he might just be x-men 
So yeah, it's funny you should say untested because I gave it a go on Tuesday night, and you do prep a lot of dice for that bad boy. Cool. Well, we're going to record a uh, justice video, which should be out by the time this podcast comes out. So check that out and see. We're going to record it tonight, unless it goes wrong or it's crap. You'll be able to watch that. <laughs> well, it probably might still. It'd probably be both of those, but we'll still put it out. <laughs> yeah. <true. laughs> Yeah, so Power Almighty, that's my choice. Uh, the pitch is very cool as well. It reminds me of Apex Legends. It looks like a first-person shooter with the two hands. Oh, my God. Yeah, oh, I'm looking for a gun. <laughs> Apex Legends. Yeah, he's, he's, holding, he's holding the dust from the ground after an atomic blast in his hands, mourning all, all the deaths. Ah. Uh. No, he's running around. He's running around an airbase looking for a gun in panic. Jeez, oh, you're an Apex Legends man. Well, maybe we should just pack in this Dice Masters podcast in Lark and jump ship to an Apex Legend podcast. We'll have like 60,000 listeners <laughs> overnight. Be raking it in. I'll certainly, it will certainly hit the thousand YouTube viewers. No problem. Yeah. Uh, right. That, right. that would pretty much imply to me that we're very much done with Pick of the Week. <laughs> <laughs> On to the next segment. On to the next segment then, yeah. <laughs> okay then, folks. So we teased it in the intro, but yes, it's true. We have, in fact, got a real spoiler for you. Uh, an actual spoiler. An actual spoiler, yeah. So listen, we, we feel guilty. We feel guilty. I know the April Fool, it was a bit of fun. Uh, I know some people don't kind of get that British humour around that stuff. And there's a lot of people going, I hate this day and all that. But I hope you took it in the in the manner in which it was int- intended. But for anyone that we did frustrate, uh, for anyone that it did aggravate, then uh, we we feel guilty. We're sorry about that. We're still in timeout on the Discord channels. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So um, in order to make it up to you, what I did is I messaged Jimmy. Now, uh, I think I've mentioned this before, but I'm really into this new Hope Summers card. Oh, I'll tell you where I wrote about it in one of my blog posts. I'm really into the Hope Summers card that's a three-cost purchase, and she copies the game text of another X-Men card. And that other X-Men card doesn't need to be active. She just copies the card outright. And I think in the blog post, I was talking about the fact that I play X-Men a lot in Golden, particularly when we do single affiliation down at the FLGS, and I was looking forward to maybe trying her out. She's, she's going to make my Colossus Piotr Rasputin team immense but i messaged jimmy anyway because i thought you know if they're putting a card like that in the box there must be a juicy six or seven coster that she's a great piece to combo up with that, that's in the team packs or in the campaign box so i messaged jimmy i said look jimmy it's about time you gave us a little something a bit of love it's been a while you've not been on the podcast for a matter of months now tell me please i'll, I'll go off the record but tell me please is there a juicy exciting seven cost six cost card with a game text that that hope someone is going to make me go that's the combo uh, and what did he do, Andy? What, what did he do? He, 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 he gave us one. He, he gave us one. Yeah, he said. Um, he said you can go on the record with this. Uh, he, he, he could only give us one card. He said I can only give you one card. But uh, here you go. Here's a little something. You can go on the record on the next episode of the podcast. So, folks, there is a seven cost Rachel Summers that when you field hope, you will be able to copy the following game text. Are you all ready? Is everyone sitting comfortably? I'm I'm more than ready for this. Do you want to read it out? I'll I'll, I'll read it out. Yeah, I'll do the uh, the reserve pool rundown. Yeah, okay, you do your thing. Okay, so Rachel Summers, she's a seven cost. And as any witnesses in the carriage will confirm, as he left the train, with his jogging bottoms round his ankles due to the explosive side effects, it was doubtful he would ever again dare to insult the chef at the Gurkha Grill, order a Vindaloo, and set off on a six-hour rail trek. It really was awful luck that the toilets had been deactivated in the station for maintenance. Apologies there to our US of stateside fans and listeners in Canada for the gratuitous use of the word toilets there. I'll hopefully find the time to splice in the word restrooms for the international edition of the podcast. Over the last few episodes, we've covered the majority of the famous leading Pauls in popular literary fiction. There was the epic three-parter covering Paul the Trades, 
and other episodes featuring, well, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the other obvious ones. So, slight detour of this episode, we're moving into the realm of cinematic fictional Pauls. Who oh, are easy fella, I hear you say. A quick Google and you'll see there are plenty of others in literature to cover in the sci-fi fantasy genres. I mean, there's obviously the Atreides and then there are um, those, uh, those others as well. But I've made the executive decision to move into cinema, at least for this episode. So I felt the obvious choice in film for a comprehensive analysis would be the Roswell conspiracy alien comedy, Paul. Well, it's all right, I suppose. Time now to reveal the winner and answer to last month's competition. Having received a few less than complimentary emails concerning the prize quality, rude, I've really pushed the boat out this month. It's a Greg's voucher for a pack of steak bakes, or for the connoisseur, vegan sausage rolls. The answer to the quiz was, of course, the safe word when using a gerbil and plastic tubing is Armageddon. People emailing in with Mr. Gear's name, or bizarrely, Pee Wee Herman's, had missed the small print referring to potential legal action. So we'll move swiftly on. The surprise winner this month was a Mrs. Trellis from South Manchester. Congratulations to you, and enjoy the pastries. So, on to the next section. A slightly obsessive fan has emailed in, despite the court order I had written up to make her stop hacking all my social media accounts, to ask if the Pixies' classic single, Gigantic, with a hook line, Hey Paul, Hey Paul, let's have a ball, was being sung about any particular Paul. Well, firstly, given the tidbit of knowledge I have of the background to this tune, sung by Kim Deal in reference to a past lover, sadly, much as I'd like to boast, the body part being referred to as gigantic in the lyric would rule me out. Possibly. Secondly, Michaela, how did you find my home address? And please stop hanging about in our garden at night. You're really freaking out the cat. And thirdly, no, I'm not doing a section on Paul McCartney. No matter how often you threaten to upload those pictures, he actually exists. He's not fictional. A fictional being could never have written the bloody frog chorus for a start, along with a few other minor hits he had here and there. Interestingly, talking about real-world Pauls, though, for a moment, Joseph Goebbels' actual first name was Paul, and the unusual Monty Python-style gait he walked around with... Wow. I wait to uh, play about with that combo, and I'm not too keen on when you're playing with it against me. So uh, we'll have to see uh, what other cards come out to counter it. But what I'm sure the listeners will agree, an amazing card and an amazing spoiler, and a, an a apology for uh, us uh, and our April Fools. Yeah, I can't get my head around that. I mean, even at a seven cost, I'd reach for the seven cost for that game text. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I'll be stashing my dice, I'm prepping. You could possibly go with like. Ring window, um, Creek Res, Global. Yeah. What? Res and Atlas, just to try and get there. Res, Atlas, and Sandman all on the same team. Yeah. That's really going to open things up for sure. But Definitely. then to pair that hope up with it. It's crazy. It's That's crazy. From That's from Alan. Yeah. You thought shoot was broken. Jesus. Yeah, absolutely. I can't wait to see the Facebook comments on this one, guys. You are going to, it's going to blow your minds. So, uh, yeah. Sorry for the April Fools. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed that spoiler. Yes, there we go, folks. We've come to the end of yet another episode of the Ministry of Dice podcast. We hope you enjoyed listening as much as we enjoyed recording. I've become very self-conscious about that statement since you drew attention to the fact that I use the same outro every time. When did I do that? A couple of episodes ago, and then I tried to mix it up last episode, and it went a bit wrong. (laughs) Sorry. It's all right. In any case, there we go. We've come to the close. Uh, so a quick reminder, UK listeners, the MOD PDM is at the Crescent Gaming Consortium on the 18th of May in Leamington Spa. Come on, meet us. Come and join us. 
Yes, yeah, loads of swag, loads of prizes. Uh, you'll find the tickets on Eventbrite. Absolute bargain for a great day out and a full day's rolling of dice. Um, we've got no idea what we're doing in the next episode, so I can't even tease that. No, we're going to have to put our thinking caps on. Yeah, yeah, we're at the end of the list now, so episode 45 might be a barnstormer, or it could be a sewage pipe. <laughs> if anyone's got any ideas of what they'd like us to do, do please get in touch because we're not sure yet. Might yes. have a bar though. Which oh yeah. Might... Yeah. Uh yeah, what is the next episode? Oh, I do know what we'll have. Will that be in time or is that the next the episode after that? What for? We've got a bar appointment scheduled. A bar appointment? Yeah. Um yeah, no, we should be in time for the next one. Yes, we will have that actually. So there's going to be our next Ministry of Dice at the Bar guest. That'll be good to come back for. Yeah, that's half of it done. Yeah, there you go. Cool. And then the rest of it, I'm sure, will be amazing. Uh, so come on back for that. Uh, if you do want to get in touch, then you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash the Ministry of Dice. You can find us on Twitter at Brit Roller Mr. Six. You can head to our YouTube page, which again is the Ministry of Dice. Like and subscribe. 33 subscribers. 33 is growing. 967 to go. Yeah, that's not bad, man. 33, we've we've only really... I mean, I know the channel's been open for a while, but we've only started putting content up, what, like a month ago? Yeah, true. Or maybe not. Still that, might be, that might be dreadfully awful for all I know. we got to catch cookers. Yeah, yeah, nip at his heels. Catch the cookers, catch the cookers. So like and subscribe and all the other things that you need to do so that we can we can catch the cookers. I like that. I'll say that again. Catch the cookers. Catch the cookers. Say That's again. a new phrase. Catch the cookers. Yeah. 967 to go. Get subscribing, folks. That was my Muttley impression. <laughs> I can't do it. I can barely talk. <laughs> this episode, be talking like an absolute spoon. Mm. No commentary on that. You do. Um, <laughs> so yeah come back in two weeks time folks. I've been Chris aka True Mr 6 and I've been Andy aka Axel Foley <laughs> <laughs> that works better before I had this dodgy throat <laughs> I'll see you in a fortnight ladies and gents <laughs>